we do mirror matches here because the characters are horrifically unbalanced. <laughs> so uh, in order to get, you know, some, uh, you know, more different characters on the screen, we treat them kind of like stages. Um, yeah, so you're expected to be able to play well uh, across multiple different characters mm -hmm. and deal with multiple different patterns. Yeah, and Magician here is like a pretty balanced character in terms of pressure and playing for quota. So that's how we have our competitors start off. And then from there, loser gets to pick the next character with the caveat that you cannot pick a character that you already want as. Right. If you're uh, familiar with the Smash scene, uh, it's Dave's stupid rule. That's it. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, Magician, as Note said, uh, has, you know, you can pressure people out on, on Magician, um, but typically at this level we're going to see a lot of quota. Uh, Decker got a little mixed up by the Spire in the center there, oh, no. which if you don't control it, it can quickly grow out of control. <laughs> yeah. Now moving on to round three. Wampa clearing that green burst orb, Deca doing the same, not getting as much out of it, but still rolling. Yeah, unfortunately, um, that chain ended up really long, um, and if you're more familiar with the strategy for Magical Drop, you might know what's you know the problem with that, but if you're not, um, short chains are actually typically more efficient for sending garbage, and also they tend to send the you know, the jagged parts of the pattern more often if you do a lot of small chains rather than big ones. So um, by doing a really long chain, you actually send an easier pattern to your opponent. And also, uh, you, uh, it's, it's not as efficient in terms of what you're, uh, what you're clearing, what you're giving them, so. Mm-hmm. We're traveling on to death here, a bit more of a harder pattern for the most part. Still manageable, but yeah, there's a lot of orbs coming in. Yeah, Death's big, uh, I guess, quirk is that she has this very flat ice pattern, comes up underneath the, uh, the regular garbage, and um, while her pattern in, like, in the abstract doesn't actually seem that difficult, um, it's actually like surprisingly hard just because you're going to end up in those situations where uh, you have nothing on top of your board except ice. In order to clear ice, you need to clear something on top of it. So you are going to end up uh, in a situation where you're bricked and there's nothing you can do about it. Close quota match that time though. Indeed, four left. Want to pull down more lines before firing off the burst orb there. Ooh, that goes really big clears here. Alright. Fortunately getting a little bit stuck at the top. Oh, those reds! Mm. Yeah, getting in the way there. But still able to shuffle the way around. Oh gosh, but the pressure. Yeah, a mist drop. Sealed it. Wampo is just cooking. Yeah, that's, that's what he does. Just controlling the ice pattern well. Also just a very fast player. You can see he, he uh, did a bunch of movements there in order to get a bunch of things to pop at the same time. Which, if you're quota racing, is an excellent skill. Um, because you don't, like, if you're a little bit late, um, then your orbs will pop as a chain instead of at the same time. Um, which you can use that to your advantage to slow the game down, but if you're quota racing, you typically don't want to do that. You typically want to be clearing as efficiently as possible, so you need to be able to recognize those, uh, you know, circumstances where you can clear multiple things at once. Indeed. So Fool is a bit of a joke pick. Yeah, kinda. It's like... 
His pattern is just really easy, and for the most part, I under if I understand correctly, the strategy is to like obviously like try not to send your opponent garbage at first, but then like once the chains like start happening like accidentally and whatnot, just keep working through Fool's pattern. That is pretty much how it works. Although, uh, yeah, I think um, Wampa led off with a really big chain there, which was kind of surprising. Um, yeah. So deck of pulling that rounds. We can do it two more times to stay alive. So there's one other thing to note here, which is that if you um, clear seven orbs in a one chain, that will also send a little bit of garbage. So if you're really trying to avoid sending garbage at all, you do also need to keep track of how many, how much you're clearing at once. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, the quota stuff going back and forth, but Wampa able to take it here. Yeah, Fool is typically a very volatile matchup, because so many huge clears going back and forth, you can't really keep track of quota that well. Indeed. Alright, so Wampa looks like is actually going for the can't-get-any-wetter strategy. Which is, if you're going to send garbage, you may as well chain as long as possible, because what ends up happening is, again, you cap out pretty early on the damage, and then um, you are, you know, any players pass that once in your economy garbage. Okay, that's a close to quota victory, and makes it. Alright, so it looks like that there. strategy maybe didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> A rainbow orb in play. Gonna be popped immediately by one That guy's that guy waiting. Is... Oh my wow. goodness! Deco wins on fool. Oh my god! The pressure victory. Oh, we got the let's go in chat. <laughs> Good stuffs. And now All we're right. Empress. Empress. So Empress and World basically the same character. Uh, I think they might have some differences in terms of which power-ups you see, but the patterns are exactly the same. And uh, what you'll notice is that it sort of pushes the inside of the board, which is to say the part closest to the center of the screen. So for player one, the right side of their board, for player two, the left-hand side. And uh, Empress and World are considered, uh, you know, sort of... They're pressure characters, but they're not the strongest ones. Um, their pattern is eminently livable if you know how to manage it, unlike some of the crazier characters. Oh geez, Deca able to take round one here. Yeah. With the pressure victory, too. Goodness. A bit of ice on Deca's side, able to clear it though. And also keep an eye on that left side, taking out the wards on it so don't get topped out. It's oh, yeah! <laughs> Needed to go for the reds first, fortunately. Yeah, so one thing that may happen uh, is you might end up getting these like sort of long vertical streaks on the opposite side of the board from where the like, pressure really pushes up. Ooh! That hurts. Um, and those you can- you can kind of abuse those to delay, uh, things a little bit. I would say that the thing about World and Empress is that, um, living their pressure is sort of a test of how well you can manage floating orbs. If you can do it well, then it's actually not that bad. Um, but it's like, the skill to, you know, be able to live high tiers. Indeed. Really spooky situation for Wampa there. Uh-oh. Well, this could be a uh, bad well. <laughs> oh, oh, it's off time! Oh, no! Probably Curse Column didn't get that yellow in there. Indeed. Alrighty, well, that's 3-1 for Wampa, but, uh, good showing from Deca. We'd love to see the, uh, we'd love to see one up on the board there. Indeed.